So after what seems like an eternity of research, I have finally added a new lens to my collection, the Zeiss Baris 85mm f1.8. And in today's video, I'll share with you what I think about this lens after using it for about two weeks and why I chose it over the Sony 85mm 1.8 or 90mm f2.8 macro. Starting with the design, this lens has a fantastic minimalist design. It's built out of metal, which makes it feel very premium, but also a bit heavy, weighing 452 grams, which is slightly heavier than the Sony 85mm f1.8. It doesn't have an autofocus manual focus switch, a customizable button, or an aperture ring, but it has a very smooth rubberized focus ring, a mini OLED display to view the focus distance, complete weather sealing for use in harsh environments, a 67mm filter thread and built-in stabilization. I kind of wish it had an autofocus manual focus switch and a customizable button because I'm so used to having them with my other lenses but it's not really a big deal. Also because of the protruding rubber gasket on the lens mount it's a bit difficult to mount on my Sony cameras. I have the ZV-E1 and ZV-E10 and I find it a bit difficult to mount on the camera compared to my other Sony lenses, but I guess this is the trade-off for having excellent weather sealing performance. When it comes to stabilization, as you may know, third-party Sony lenses don't work as effectively with the active stabilization on latest Sony cameras, and this lens is no exception. I tested it on my Sony ZV-E1 and it performed decently overall, but it wasn't as smooth as with the native Sony 85mm f1.8 that I rented a couple of weeks ago. However, when active or dynamic stabilization is completely disabled and only the eye base of the camera is used, basically the standard steady shot option, I believe the built-in stabilization of this lens offers a slightly more organic stabilization performance, which I personally prefer. Here are some side-by-side -side clips for you to decide. Moving on to focus, from my limited experience with this lens, I find the video autofocus performance to be incredible. It's very fast and accurate and works just as well as my native Sony lens for what I do, which includes some product B-roll and landscape shots. But I'm not really sure how well it will do on a gimbal following a subject because I don't really do this type of things. However, it does have some downsides when it comes to focus. First of all, it has poor focus breathing performance and unfortunately it doesn't support breathing compensation on my ZV-E1 because it's not a native Sony lens. Additionally, the minimum focus distance is quite far at 80 centimeters, which makes this lens less versatile. I don't really care about focus breathing because I don't really do focus pulling shots, but I do wish this lens had closer minimum focus distance distance to get some cool close-up shots. This was one of the main reasons I was considering getting the 90mm macro instead, but I didn't like the size of that lens and the f2.8 aperture. I think for me having an f1.8 aperture is more important for creative shots because I mainly shoot outdoors, but if I was doing mainly product bureau shots or something similar, I would definitely have gotten the 90mm macro instead. Moving on to performance, this was the main reason why I chose this lens over the Sony 85mm f1.8 I rented a few weeks ago. I just didn't like how the Sony 85mm looked. It was flat, boring and kinda hazy looking. 
working. Also, a while back, I rented the Zeiss 55mm f1.8, and one thing I clearly remember about that lens is its distinct look. Some people call it 3D pop, Zeiss pop, or micro contrast, whatever it is, but ever since I wanted to get that look, and that's why I chose the Zeiss lens, and I'm happy I did. To my eyes, it's sharper than the Sony 85mm, especially when shooting wide open, and it doesn't have that fuzzy look to it. It has a lot of contrast and looks more organic, alive. I don't know how to describe it really. However, it does have a slightly warmer tint to the image than the Sony 85mm f1.8, and it suffers from slight chromatic aberration when shooting wide open, which is also the case with the Sony 85mm f1.8. Overall, I think the image quality of this lens is fantastic. I might be wrong about the Sony 85mm f1.8, it might be sharper or better, but as of now, I prefer the Zeiss lens. To summarize, the Zeiss Baris 85mm f1.8 is awesome. It offers fantastic image quality, autofocus performance, built-in stabilization, and build quality. However, it's not perfect. It lacks a customizable button and an autofocus manual focus switch. It's a bit chunky compared to the Sony 85mm. It doesn't have close focus capabilities, which makes it less versatile than something like the 90mm macro, and it's soft from poor focus breathing performance. Also, don't forget, this is a third-party lens, so it won't provide you with the latest and coolest features that Sony cameras have to offer, such as breathing compensation, digital stabilization performance, or high photo burst capabilities. Anyhow, thank you for watching, leave your comments or questions down below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.